Good evening, all, and thank you for your invitation. I'm greatly honored to be able to participate in this discussion. Now, I'm going to try to challenge what Antoine uh, has been uh, explaining to you quite brilliant, quite brilliantly. I work with uh, Germain Eric in, uh, in my service in Beaujon, in my uh, unit. And I'm going to try to convince you that sedation is anything but routine practice in uh, IC. And I have chosen to do this with two clinical cases, exceptional situations, but we will be discussing all of this. We have a, a young subject with uh, heavy uh, psychiatric uh, uh, disorders. I don't need to go into the details. Uh, uh, drug addiction, uh, um, uh, casualized situation, uh, psychotropic and uh, medication cocktail, including absolutely anything you can find on planet Earth. The patient falls from his balcony in very unclear situation uh, is brought in by the um, emergency uh, ambulance service who see nothing special uh, and no special alarm there's hypothermia which can slow down a, a heartbeat the Glasgow 15 um, and well they bring him in without any further signaling, without any intubation, ventilation or sedation for a body scan to the local hospital in a situation they consider reassuring after the body scan. A number of things are observed. I'll show you the scan of the skull, but there's no uh, hypertension inside the skull. Uh, uh, there's uh, a, a lung trauma, which is going to be uh, problematic. Uh, you can see that this image is not very high quality, um, unfortunately, and I apologize for that, but do believe me. Uh, pneumoencephaly, um, uh, subdural, slightly uh, bruised. Uh, and here we have uh, the possibility uh, of need for heavy sedation from the outset, which is what we will discuss. The uh, lung trauma is voluminous, it's a stage, stage four. The whole right side is into pieces, it requires a uh, emergency intervention, which is why he sent off to Bourgeon. Uh, sedation is not routine practice here. You can notice it. How do you carry a patient carrying his own internal time bomb, no intubation, no ventilation? It's completely possible. If you look at the sequence of events, there's nothing, un there's nothing unusual as to the reasoning of the doctors that uh, uh, cared for this patient. He arrives in Bourgeon with a Glasgow 15. He's stable. Uh, uh, such a of the uh, wound in the scalp, uh, uh, embolization of uh, the uh, right uh, uh, artery of the liver. Uh, here you can see the uh, very clear explanation. Uh, uh, everything is dried up uh, efficiently and uh, cleanly. Evolution of the patient. The doctors in this unit again consider there's no point in resuscitating, uh, intubating, uh, ventilating, uh, uh, just because there's a liver hemorrhage that can put his life potentially in danger, but there's no uh, emergency. With the psychiatric antecedents, they're trying to look to the difficulty of possible weaning syndrome, de delirium, in particular delirium tremens, which is uh, why there's a uh, uh, jazepin uh, at this stage. Then there's a degradation of the patient's state from a respiratory point of view, uh, and he is quickly intubated. And I would like to summarize what happened in terms of sedation for this patient, which is an unusual case. So very quickly, 
you have Enterobacter uh, cloacae uh, with problems in uh, major problems in ventilation. He has access to all modern practices in terms of uh, MV. Professor Jabert will tell you all about it because he's the uh, engineer. I'm the I'm the uh, Workman, I, I cannot explain all the details. Uh, Curar it has been explained as good practice. It reduces mortality. So, yes, and there's very high levels in uh, morphine. Uh, uh, and uh, it's very difficult to keep him quiet. A week goes by. First weaning is envisaged to avoid the syndrome because you never have a, 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 a RAS between minus two um, plus one. It's either over four or below minus five. Anyway, uh, agonists uh, tried clinidine and uh, chlorpromazine to envisage uh, uh, full uh, perfusion for a progressive weaning. Clonidine does not function, so Dex is try. This is a very bad idea. There's no reason it should do any better than clonidine. Uh, it's no treatment for acute agitation. That's not how it's used, which probably explains why the molecule seems to fail. So redegradation of the uh, ventilation situation, back to the same regime. And then we go into even further exceptional practices, which in this case were e effective. Uh, which uh, is uh, the uh, use of uh, isofluorin, very low concentration, it's very effective. And this uh, enables continuous flow to ensure comfort and absence of agitation. In this patient, uh, this is very difficult to calm down, to minimize the risk of self-extubation, etc. And all of this made it possible to prepare the real weaning phase, uh, medicated. Uh, um, and you can see that this patient was extubated successfully after three weeks. Now, this is a very unusual patient. You don't see this type every day. But it is therefore perfect illustration that sedation is not a routine practice, that patient by patient it leads to a number of issues, particularly for these very difficult patients to sedate. Evolution was favorable. The patient went back home, if you can call it that, since he was homeless. Uh, but in the end, he recovered with a consumption of a massive cocktail. Now, uh, just to, to look at the only randomized study from the team of Jabert, with a small um, group, 30 per, uh, patients per group, sevofluorin, uh, the idea is very low concentrations again, as compared to propofol and midazolam. And in all cases, uh, uh, with these substances, you can extubate earlier. The scores have a, um, better, uh, better maintained in terms of the objectives of sedation, and the length of stays also improved. There's less delirium. Um, but it's a very small group, so it's difficult to draw conclusions. Isofluorin is uh, very uh, effective, particularly for controlling uh, agitation period with a bolus, uh, with very precise controls, with a dispatched ventilatory inhaled, uh, automated as well as liquid. Uh, 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 the, you can call in, there's a protocol to call in the doctor if something goes wrong. There's a piloted system depending on the sedation scores. Uh, all of this is possible with these halogenated uh, substances, but you do need a gas uh, analyzer, and concentrations are never very high. It's low concentrations of anesthetic with the uh, technical equipment. Second case, exact opposite, much shorter. But this will establish the basis for discussion. That was the north face of the Eiger. 
how do you ensure that the patient keeps calm? Otherwise, it can lead to self-extubation, uh, self-injury. Uh, it can put his life in danger. Now, in this case, it's a clinical case that was discussed with Nicola Weiss and Tarek Charchat the other day. I hope you don't mind. On delirium. And this, these were the main conclusions. This is your basic everyday patient. 77 years, uh, uh, alcohol and tobacco consumption, um, treatment as listed here. The patient has a uh, fast progressing uh, respiratory distress with fever, hypoxemic, uh, uh, has uh, uh, opacities appearing on, appearing on x-rays. Um, you can see that he's not doing well, and he's quickly intubated in a fast sequence with uh, hemodynamic uh, stabilization, no problem there, and uh, improvement uh, of uh, uh, bruising, uh, pneumopathy, uh, pneumococcus. This patient is therefore in intensive care, has been intubated, is doing better. And then he's examined, and this is what we observe. The patient is calm. He has been agitated, but is no more. He's adapted to the ventilator. The RAS is minus two. He's uh, slightly sleepy, but can be woken up. So these are objectives uh, fully in line with present recommendations. There's even been a CAM ICU uh, to measure delirium, none. PL hasn't been done. Now, to start the discussion, what type of sedation could be useful to this type of patient? And this is where the whole issue of routine kicks in, because the fundamental question is, does this patient need sedation? Antoine brilliantly demonstrated that it was a routine consideration to envisage sedation as light as possible in order not to um, extend uh, MV, etc. Now, let's look at the literature. And you will see the level of the literature, which very clearly states what you should do, except it should be, it should be read and it should be um, analyzed. Current recommendations of the American Society, who's ahead of what we have in France, ours is, has been, because there's uh, so much new data since 2007 that it's really outdated. And by the way, you note that the, the very word sedation is no longer in the title of the guidelines. We're talking about pain, agitation, and uh, uh, delirium or confusion. As Antoine rightly said, the uh, objective in terms of sedation depth is continually uh, dropping for uh, patients without brain lesions, I apart from a few very severe exceptions. This represents 80% of uh, intensive care patients. So there is no reason to sedate, as a matter of principle, a patient who doesn't need it. The disadvantages of sedation, just look at any medical journal, New England, JAMA Lancet, uh, over the past two years, and you can see what data we have that need to be taken into account. Alteration of cognitive function after uh, resuscitation in a vast number of patients, more than half. Sedation is a predictive factor, possibly directly, but through delirium and confusion, uh, uh, which is practically dosage dependent, uh, depending on the dosage of uh, benzodiazepine, which has been well demonstrated in several publications. And in this study, you can see that these poor patients in ICU who have these uh, cognitive uh, uh, difficulties, a coma for a mean of three days, possibly up to a week. Is this justified? It's this routine practice where patients are immediately sedated. It might be useful when you're uh, connecting catheter, etc., but it's more practical then to leave them. And they go in through a full week of therapeutic coma, which has been demonstrated to lead to uh, cognitive uh, dysfunctioning and delirium. 
And this is one of the symptoms that uh, um, people in uh, intensive care units don't know very well how to measure delirium. And does anyone here measure delirium? I always ask the question, and when I get one hand up, that's one heck of a victory. Nobody in the room. That's perfectly normal because you have a cognitive decline in practically any medical situation, an increase in mortality, whether it's in surgery, I see, um, old age medicine, uh, dementia, etc. So it should be measured. I'll try and show you this slide, which I understand differently. Now, he believes that it's not very clear uh, to say whether well, sedation has an effect on mortality. So this is uh, one cohort. There's another intensive care medicine. It's about the same thing, uh, the same author on the other side of the Indian Ocean. This is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about patients that have been almost automatically sedated when they reached ICU. And then they're forgotten in, in a coma for as a few days. Right, but that has an effect six months later or three months later at exit time by increase in mortality. So it's not a demonstration, it's an association. But it's the first time that a strong uh, correlation seems to appear between deep sedation of these patients in blue, in the blue curve, as compared to light sedation. And this means something. Now, if we want to know what to do, um, read the papers that are clear and serious and that explain what sedation is. It's a series of questions. It's not a routine procedure step by step. The first question is, is there any specific indication for sedation? Yes, uh, uh, epilepticus, uh, intracranial hypertension, severe uh, respiratory failure. Uh, it's certainly not the case with 80% of ICU patients. As the American uh, uh, conference uh, says, is he in pain? Yes, no. If it's yes, it's um, analgesics, um, morphine. Uh, is there confusion? That's the third question. Yes, there may be a cause. Maybe uh, you need uh, to um, uh, operate. Maybe there are sed uh, sedation agents that have created a uh, delirium. And it's only at the end of the process, fourth position. After all of these series of questions, this is customized medicine uh, sedation. Uh, you end up with a question, do we need to uh, increase the depth of uh, sedation, and in some cases, uh, it's a perfectly acceptable uh, practice. For this patient, uh, um, who's just like any patient, I would have said a simple titration of morphine would uh, suffice, depending on the pain score. Uh, we have a very good one in Grenoble that's been around the world, uh, translated into Japanese and what have you. You measure delirium because it's part of good practice, and if nobody is doing it today, possibly two, three uh, years down the line uh, here in Paris, we'll have half the room raising their hand. And if need be, if the patient is anxious, uncomfortable, you can get him to sleep. Right, you can have hypnotics, but. Why not bolus? Why immediate uh, uh, continuous perfusion of uh, midazolam? This this routine practice is something that I really am against. You have you can have a bolus, and if the situation deteriorates, then depending on the severity, you can take a different decision. So sedation in ICU is customized medicine. It's exceptional medicine. I'm not talking about no sedation, but uh, it should be lightened. And you can see that the problem today is that automatically, without even asking whether the patient needs it, you sedate patients as soon as they step in. You leave them in a coma for a few days, and they might pay for this in terms of mortality six months down the line. It's the objective of the SPICE-3 uh, randomized uh, 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 survey, 400 patients throughout the world that's really looking into this in the main.